Okay, so the powerful of the DAS, it's not just so you can create it. The nice things is when you can render your image and share your work with other artists. To do this, we actually need to go and look on some render properties. Before we do this, let's go very fast, create something. So we'll go to the figuring. Okay, let's go actually select the elephant. Okay. As we're selecting elephant right here, we can go inside the pauses and let's go to select maybe this one. We'll go inside the materials and we'll have it all textures already pre-done. So we'll look good. Okay, let's maybe like this angle. I think that will be doing very well. Okay, next. We already kind of done a little bit with the pauses. We'll look on this and we can say, well, you know what? Maybe I want to modify a little bit of this ear. Adjust a little bit bending. Maybe I'll take this task slightly out. So you can adjust some properties if you need for the pausing. We go and next and lighting. And for the lighting, I want to add some to highlight, you know, maybe from here, but I want to add some lighting on this texture and maybe some good backlighting. So let's go ahead and we'll go create um, linear point light. So we'll go right here, select it. Remember what I say, we'll just go ahead and move this on the back. This light, oops, control Z. So I don't need to do this. Okay, we'll go inside the lights. Let's go just select our light from here. And I'll just move on the back. Here, what, what I'm doing, I'm creating backlighting, so we'll have a nice, interesting shape. And we'll go increase intensity, increase fallout. And bring just slightly. So right here, you can see we have it. Let's create another light, and you can see we have a beautiful highlights going on this so we'll create one more on the side and up front and i think that will look good so we'll go to create just normal point lights okay we'll do right here okay let's pop up just slightly intensity and let's create distant light as well Okay, actually I like how distance gone aside. We'll just take this one, bring a little bit up and pop up a little bit more lighting. So I think this will look very good. Okay, let's go ahead, select distant lighting. I just want to see if it's, we can kind of adjust Brightness. I think this one will work. Kind of nice. Okay. So we'll set up this one. Next, let's go create our camera because I can render from perspective view. But for this purpose, let's go to create new camera. Okay. We'll switch to the camera view now. And I can go adjust my camera point. Okay, let's make go bring camera down so we'll make elephant look way bigger okay i think right around here will be look good okay i'm going inside the general and just probably just adjust a little bit on the rotation and we can make even out of position okay with our camera, we don't worry about focal distance or any other stuff. So I think this is look good. And let's go right now look on a render tab. So you'll notice right here in render, we already have kind of preset that we want to switch. So we'll go to switch the camera view. But you notice right here we have a screen and this is a resolution render. I want actually wide, I don't want tall. We'll go inside the editor. 
And you notice we have it already preset some, which is given us um, on the quality or the resolution, but I want to modify for my render. So inside the editor, if I go inside the general properties, right here I have it my pixel size. So let me go ahead and set 800 and maybe by 400, okay? Okay, and you notice right here our height is changed as well. So I cannot, if I modify it's changing. And the reason is why the constraint proportional is on. So I want to turn them off. And we'll go set 400. So right here, maybe it's a little bit too wide. So maybe let's go with a 500 height. There you go. That's look better. Okay, and currently, as we know all properties, you can notice right here we have it custom preset is what we have it you can save it if you want your preset after but right now not yet i want to just try it we have it our pixel size and the high resolution will always take longer time to render so be careful what you said but again if you want to high definition it will be 1920 by 1080 so we can change this but right now as a test i will leave it to low resolution and i recommend to you first time when you render don't crank up your all uh, settings to very high quality because it will take a long time and you want just a preview. Okay, next we have our aspect right show. We can put it in 1.22 or other ones, which is already a kind of default, but I will leave it custom. And render time currently, we have it a still image current frame. So we can preset image series or move, but I want just one frame for now render target we can open in new window if you want render directly to the file and sometimes it's helpful if you continue working on your project and you also can enter the name file name notice right here we have a different type jpeg png tff and bmp type format file the one thing to know that jpeg it's have the comp higher compression rate so PNG will also provide good transparency if you want to overlay, like maybe make compositing or other thing. And TFF, it's uncompressed. It will create quite a bit big size, but it's a provide you the best quality. And BMP, it's kind of older legacy window support. But also, you can specify where you want to save. So we'll have a progressive render. It's when skip a line kind of going. We'll just leave it off default. The bucket size, it's a little bit more advanced, uh, but it is a sampling on anti-aliasing. It's what happened with how many pixels look. So how I say all of these additional samplings gain all these gamma properties. They're a little bit more advanced and just leave it as default for now. Or if you use the preset, you can use the already preset from rendering. Okay, so we have it here. We can also go inside the advanced and if we have it any motion blur in animations or other things, we can enable it through this window. Okay, as a test, let's go ahead and click render and you can see right here, it's got quite a bit fast to render. So we have it our um, render pop up. So we have a nice lighting. Again, because we don't have no environment, anything, we have this clear background. And if you do compositing, this is perfect. You just take and place it where you want it. Um, you also, from this render menu, you can save with same specify any file format you want it and a path as well. So again, I just take a test for this. Also, when you render, you have a different option to use different render engines. What does it mean by render engines? It's a different way how the light calculating because it's always rendered directly from the camera. So in our rays, translate from the camera to the object to the lights. So right here, for example, we have a basic OpenGL, intermediate OpenGL, 3D Delight, and scripted 3D Delight. So it's scripted if you have it already predefined and want preloaded. Um, the 3D Delight is kind of um, default engine for the das 3d and it's does it produce very good result however if you want to more on open gel you can create it different and you can see it's slightly look differently a bit more bump texture compared to the default 3d okay 
right like here so you can see it's a little bit different this on default and let's go on default preview okay you can see it's create a little bit more aligned anti aliasing losing right here on these areas so just slightly different ways to look at that and you probably also notice when i click on the default so it's reset to default values pixel size and also aspect ratio 4 by 3 so it's showing right there okay i hope this is will help you to start kind of creating and render so in the next tutorials we'll look on more on the customizations as well we'll look on a little bit more advanced access panel with the properties and content library that let you to more configure and work with uh, DAS 3.0